to have organized such a thing. I mean, get the old bomb part, you know, get, get the bombs off, get some old parts from an A-10, drop them on the side of a mountain, take his body, chop it up into some part, drop that on the side of the mountain, who knows? You know, but we're certainly not being told the truth about this. And what is this possible connection to March 13th, 1997? Well, it happened two weeks after March 13th, 1997. Maybe he knew that the flare drop was a cover story. Okay, that's one motive to get rid of him. He certainly flew an A-10. He certainly flew from the same base that the other A-10s that the government says dropped the flares. So you put one and one and two together, and what do you get? You get three or four. So, and these are all important questions that should be looked into, and they haven't been in relationship to March 13, 1997. Um, Sensors indicated, according to the government, uh, that an infrared event, whatever that infrared event means, we don't know because they haven't uh, explained it, uh, occurred uh, in the area of the search area where they later found uh, Craig Button's plane. However, uh, there are over 40 seismic sensors in the area, and not one of them registered anything in the magnitude of a bomb exploding or a plane crashing which is exactly what we would expect to see if, the, if this supposed uh, uh, material from Craig Button's A-10 was dropped on the side of a mountain instead of crashing into the side of a mountain. Again, we don't know where the bombs are. We never found the bombs. The bombs have never been recovered. So if uh, Craig Button had dropped those bombs, you know, certainly someone would probably hear that or see it or feel it. Maybe not. I don't know. But again, it's just another mystery. Um, on April 15th, 1997, this is a couple of weeks after Craig Button. This is from Reuters now. This isn't UFOlogy stuff. Uh, the military has tightened security at the Colorado headquarters of its North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, which is in Cheyenne Mountain, which is not too far from where Craig Button allegedly crashed his aircraft. Uh, and uh, they said that they had to put the most secure military installation probably on Earth on alert. For what? Now, the spokesmen say that uh, this is in response to some type of threat. They never specified the threat. Again, this is Reuters. This is not UFOlogy conspiracy theory. Uh, that they were concerned about the Oklahoma bombing, uh, uh, the anniversary of the Oklahoma bombing, excuse me, and the, uh, and the Waco incidents because it was coming up on the anniversary. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but I think if Spacecom at Cheyenne Mountain can survive a, a direct hit from a thermonuclear blast, I don't know how much damage some nutcase can do. I don't know why they would they feel that they would have to get everyone out of the facility. However, if you uh, take into consideration the idea that perhaps there was some type of alien threat which was occurring uh, or in the midst of occurring as a result of perhaps something traveling behind Comet Hill, Bob, yeah. That might be a reason to uh, kick everyone out of Spacecom and keep it secret because, of course, they're going to be monitoring, monitoring those events that were happening. Uh, the Pentagon official in Washington, uh, when he was asked to describe why, what the threat was, uh, the information, quote-unquote, of possible security concerns had been received and resulted in the crackdown at Cheyenne Mountain headquarters at NORAD. Uh, although one of the most secure installations in the nation, due to this information, additional security measures are deemed prudent. Okay, they never just said what the threat was. They said it was something to do with Waco, but Waco had already gone by. The anniversary had already gone by by April 15th. So what's going on? The nature of the threat was not explained, but Shalak Kishvili said Thursday, the timing of the threat has come and gone, and I suspect that in the not-too-distant future they will return back to normal. This was on April 17th, 1997. Well, if the threat's already come and gone, then why do they still need to, to be on lockdown? Again, if you take the idea or the theory that these were alien craft, which were seen by myself, by Tim Lay, and probably seven or 800 other people in, in Phoenix, then yeah, it looks like it scared the living you-know-what out of the United States government and the Russians, okay? Hence, 